Oh, mate. <laughs> Hello, buddy. How's it going? Um, oh, can you bring gifts every time? Oh, that's the, that's, the, that's the super important one for today. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, welcome to this week's Heat Geek. Uh, you've got me, Greg, uh, this week. Uh, we're here in uh, sunny Lower Basildon carrying out an air source heat pump at this property. Uh, let's go and take a look around. This is my colleague Liam, Hello. who's uh, as you can see busy getting the wiring prepped. This is the location for the heat pump. We've got a base uh, that's gone in, it's been prepped by the builder. A couple of adjustments made to the base, then when we arrived on site, it wasn't quite as level as we'd like. And where we used fixed feet uh, on the heat pump, the, the unit needs to be level. So, um, so yeah, it's quite important for the base to be level. So we had a couple of adjustments made to make sure we're happy with that, and now we're we're all good. Liam is, yeah, like I say, we're getting cabling ready, getting wiring ready. And we're pretty much ready to get this heat pump in place. We're just, the base only went down in the last sort of 24 to 48 hours. So we're just giving it a little bit more drying time before uh, installing the heat pump. Here we've got a, a, a 12 kilowatt heat pump. So one of the bigger units that, um, that Valent does. So quite a heavy unit, circa 100 kilos-ish. I'm not quite sure, but it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be quite heavy. So we need to make sure this base is set before we get it in place. It was just a, it was about 20 mil out to drop this way. Yeah. So obviously when the anti vibration feet were on. And rather than re-pour it, they just sort of yeah. scabbled scabbled it back a bit and used self leveling. Yeah, yeah. And the thing with the heat pump is the weight's all on one side, so it was on the heavier side as well. So, so, so it good. would be. Yeah, so um, even it's aesthetically, it's yeah, look, it looked terrible. Drops, so. um, was there any other any other sort of sighting requirements? Anything else we yes. picked up on while we're here? So this air brick will get filled in. Um, the refrigerant it uses, um, is it screwed in zone, so we've got to be quite careful we've got around it. Which is a R two ninety refrigerant, yep. I think, in these. Yeah. So heavier than air, therefore yeah. things like this air brick need to be drainage, lot requirements of drainage Yeah, as well. drainage and stuff, so there's quite a lot of sighting requirements yeah, for the Arafirm Plus, isn't there? Pretty much with it, pie watch ready, cabling's ready, once that's dry, heat pump's in cool. place and Good to go. So once this heat pump's in place, then we're gonna. We've just got a flow and return connection. There's a, a, a flexible connection set. There's some anti-freeze valves uh, which are installed outside. Uh, some inline strainers and some isolation valves. So that assembly will go in place. A little bit easier to do that once the heat pump's in. So that'll be a job for tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. Flow and returns. Just a just two two pipework connections on the back here. Um, it is in 28 mil. And we will run from the back of the unit. So the, the issue we had with this was the customer was obviously running it in his house, but he wanted to keep his solid oak floor. Um, and he didn't want to disrupt that. And the heat pump, well, the like, plant room's the other side of this wall. So we had to run some MRC pipes for a void. So you, yeah, because you actually attended time and installed these pipes yes. prior to the job starting, didn't you? So we've got some insulated, 32 mil insulated MLC pipes, which go into the internal plant area, which we'll see. In a mind. So what lagging have we spec'd for this um, job? So, so we've got the external class O UV, yeah, UV rated, UV so rated yeah, lagging. So it doesn't shrink, it shrinks up the other stuff. And so then, it's uh, just crumbles. a bit more hardy for being yeah. outside because we've got a little bit, little bit more pipe work yeah, on the show. Gone for bigger wall thickness as well because we've got some more extra room as well. It's just Fine. holding as much heat in the pipes as we can. So the SY cables, that is mainly, I mean, what did we come across on this site? We had, the, there's a scope of work provided to the on-site electricians. In this case, it had actually annoyingly been overlooked. So they hadn't run the bus communication cable in, which is required to run the heat pump, basically. The internal um, valent controller needs to talk to this, uh, and we need a, a two-core cable. And we run it in S. Why? Just to provide some shielding against interference. So another uh, important note with the uh, communication cable is it should be is shielded. We run it in SY cable to provide some shielding against interference. It also needs to be run separately or as, or as a part as possible from um, any normal high voltage 240 volt 
uh, cabling again to stop interference. So that's uh, the outdoor unit and the heat pump area. Uh, let's go and have a look inside. <laughs> I've got an opportunity to grab a quick word with Crawford Spence, who's our customer and the client for today. Uh, what was the reason you went for a heat pump in the first place? Well, as you'll see from the footage, this house has been completely renovated. What we had before was a, an old agar, an old range cooker that was working off of an oil tank and that was heating the hot water probably quite badly and electric storage heaters. So we needed to find a new solution for that. Uh, our contractor was trying to push us towards a, a sort of simple, more easy uh, solution in the short term, which was going to be a, either an oil boiler or an LPG boiler, but you know we thought those are sort of 20th century solutions. Um, and while you know there's a bigger outlay for something like an air source heat pump, um, you know that's something that's going to future proof the house uh, for the next maybe 20, 30 years. So it, it was worth doing. Floor and returns the pipework that we've just seen strapped to the outside of the building, and then picking up the uh, insulated MLC, uh, which is multi-layer composite uh, pipework inside here. So if I show you where we're coming through, they. Uh, go in through the building on the outside, under the floor, uh, and then they pop up in here. So in my not very glamorous, what was an old sort of ground floor cloakroom. So the MLC pipe we saw on the outside, insulated all the way under the floor up to here. Uh, that's gonna be picking up these two 28 mil flooring returns and through into our utility slash plant area, which if we go next door, I'll show you that now. Welcome to my office. Well, Ongoing installation in here at the moment, so 28mm uh, flow and return coming through behind the hot water cylinder here. So we've got a valent unit store, I believe it is 275 litres. I think it's rated as a 300, but I think it's 270 something litres. Uh, yeah, our flow and return pop around the back through here. So our primary flow and return, this is set up for hot water priority. So the heat pump uh, using this SY bus communication cable that we were just talking about outside. So once this is wired into the valent control unit, it will know whether it's doing hot water or heating. It will only do one or the other. The unit, the outdoor unit is capable of ramping up to higher temperatures to heat this cylinder um, as quickly as possible. So we divert that uh, via this um, three port diverter to either through the cylinder coil uh, or through to the heating uh, circuit, which at the moment isn't quite here. The buffer is going to be mounted on this wall and a few more bits going in later today. Post buffer, we're going to be picking up this underfloor heating manifold, which takes care of heating on the ground floor. Interestingly, there is a mixture. There is some radiators on the ground floor on this job as well, but we're all we're running off of one uh, weather compensated flow temperature. So we're not going to overcomplicate it. It's not necessary. We have any mixers. Uh, or additional pumps. So we're just gonna have one pump, post buffer, uh, running the underfloor heating and radiator circuit. This here is the underfloor heating manifold. So they've retrofitted uh, a mixture, I think of overlay system. I didn't, we didn't do the underfloor heating here, but it's uh, an overlay retrofit system uh, on the ground floor. There is a mixture of radiators, uh, which the primary pipe for that isn't in place. I can't show you because it's not here. Uh, the on-site plumber will be bringing that back. We're gonna provide them with a separate flow and return they can just bolt onto our pipework after we're done. So for those of you unfamiliar, uh, producer Harrison's just saved us today. We were short of a magnetic dirt separator. So we install this in line on the primary pipework um, to and from the, the outdoor heat pump. So this is just to protect the heat pump from poor water quality. Yes, this is the connection set. So these are our flow and return hoses. So we've got our flow and return pipe work there. Um, this then goes onto the back of the heat pump, um, winds on, and then we can then bend this and manipulate it to connect onto our flow and returns here. Um, the first bit's flexi, and it obviously has a hard pipe, um, and we lag up to this as well. So whilst you're here, um, we've got the rotary switch this side of the wall, um, which is here, so it's got power coming in, um, on off, and then there's our power cable here which we clipped and this won't go into the back of the heat pump. Um, the reason the rotary switch is over here is with the type of refrigerant we use on this, it's got an exclusion zone. Um, so it can't be in certain areas, it's got to be out of the way. Um, so the refrigerant did have a leak, um, it's not a problem and it's out of the way. It's the biggest, the biggest thing is like something's not quite here or not ready or is on order, like having to stop and then move to another task. 
Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I'm waiting for the buffer vessel, which is in this case a wall-mounted buffer vessel. I think a 50 litre we've specified for this job. Uh, you may heard it, hear it referred to as a volumizer as well. Certain manufacturers uh, call it a volumizer. This is a buffer tank. Uh, it's I do have the dimensions for it, but trying to pre-pipe in anticipation of its arrival is quite difficult. So I need it here. If it's not here soon, I'm going to have to do my, one of my bugbears, which is moving on from a task and doing something else while I'm waiting. So in this case, we'll probably be wiring, I imagine. Uh, sorting out the SY cable that we spoke about earlier on. Mounting the uh, heat pump interface control module, which is a valent specific component. That's the main brain that sort of talks to the outdoor unit. Uh, and then I will probably mount this, start looking at um, our control unit, which in this case is a, is a sensor comfort. So we've got an RF pack, which is a wireless pack, a valent sensor comfort control unit. So wireless room controller. Uh, which is this, this provides all of the time temperature control for the end user, for the customer, which is a wireless unit, this is the uh, RF receiver unit for that, uh, and then importantly this is our RF uh, weather do outdoor weather sensor, so this is going to provide us with information for the system to run on weather compensation, so managing my own expectations, that's probably what I'll have to do this afternoon if my buffer doesn't turn up. Depending on deliveries, um, Hoping to be somewhere near ready, at least filled up wide, ready for this to fire by the end of the week. So we're currently Wednesday. Two more days, hopefully. We should be somewhere, somewhere near. There's literally nothing I can do. It arrived and it arrived damaged. For now, I'm off to jump in the canal. Producer Harrison will show you that video at some point.